Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. TTP re-emerges as potential threat to Pakistan. Hezbollah Mujahideen leader roaming freely in Pakistan. And India shows mirror to Pakistan at UN condemns country for providing safe haven to terrorists. Let's begin the show with Pakistan, where terror attacks have become a regular affair, especially from Tehreek e Taliban, Pakistan. In the latest, three heavily armed Pakistani Taliban terrorists attacked the Karachi police chief office, killing three security forces members and one civilian. 19 security personnel were also wounded in the attack. After an intense gun battle, two terrorists were neutralized and one blew himself up. A report. On February 17th, three heavily armed men stormed a police compound in Pakistan's Karachi. The attack resulted in the death of three security personnel and one civilian and wounded 19 security forces members. The siege lasted for at least three and a half hours with fierce gunfire raging on between terrorists and security forces. According to the police officials, one terrorist blew himself up while the two others were shot dead. Meanwhile, Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan claimed responsibility for the attack. Jawan have been martyred by from SSU and one from uh, Ranger, and few have been injured. Uh, BD is being done, and inshallah everything will be clear. And uh, it's by the blessing of Allah, the operation has been successful, and three terrorists have been killed. Last month. More than 80 officers were killed when a suicide bomber detonated an explosive vest at a mosque inside a police compound in Peshawar. The suspicion directly fell on Tehreek e Taliban. It grew even stronger when Serb Kaf Mohammed claimed responsibility for the attack. However, TTP reversed course after the Afghan Taliban condemned the attack. The militancy has been using Khyber Pakhtunkhwa as its base. Since November, TTP has been engaged in a protracted conflict with Pakistan's police and army. The Pakistani government has been under fire from both domestic and foreign experts for concessions it has made to the Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan. These academics argue that Pakistan's morally repugnant practice of bargaining with radical organizations legitimizes terrorist goals. The idea of dangerous religious radicals proliferating in Pakistan and aiding the growth of international terrorist groups has long been a source of debate among the Islamic Republic's successive rulers. Pakistani deep state has managed to build a worldwide infrastructure of, uh, I would say, organized crime. And uh, they are beneficiaries of this kind of thing. I don't think internal institutions of Pakistan are in a position to restrain them. They have managed to brainwash uh, their whole generations and they believe that uh, Pakistani dabbling with terrorism and organized crime is something which enhances the glory of Islam. A uh, very strong pocket of Islamic radicalism they have managed to create where no questions are asked. Despite the fact that Pakistan has lost thousands of lives, the nation has not altered its strategy. Pakistan is directly contributing to the rise of Islamic terrorist danger in the nation by failing to prosecute several leaders of UN proscribed terror groups and even going so far as to guarantee their security. Pakistan has long failed to take appropriate action to combat terrorism within and outside of the country. The country is now facing the consequences of its inaction and those suffering the most continue to be Pakistani citizens. India on February 23 exercised its right of reply at United Nations General Assembly against Pakistan and advised Islamabad to look at its own track record as a state that provides safe havens to terrorists. India slammed Pakistan after it referred to Jammu and Kashmir during a special session on Ukraine in the UN General Assembly terming the provocation as regrettable and misplaced. A report. 
Pakistan's obsession with Kashmir is as old as its creation. For Kashmir, Pakistan staked its sovereignty, its identity, its economy, and even the lives of its citizens. Over decades, mass hysteria was created and every Pakistani was expected to forfeit his life, property, and the future of his children, all for that mad dream called Kashmir. Despite fighting these three overt wars and carrying out numerous covert operations, Islamabad has clearly failed in its objective to annex Jammu and Kashmir. With Pakistan failing to get traction for its belligerent stand on Kashmir, the successive governments in the country raised the issue at all international forum, including at the UN General Assembly. India recently slammed Pakistan after it referred to Jammu and Kashmir during a special session on Ukraine in the UN General Assembly, terming the provocation as regrettable and misplaced. While exercising its right of reply at UNGA against Pakistan, India advised Islamabad to look at its track record as a state that provides safe havens to terrorists. Uh, Mr. President, I am taking the floor today to say that India chooses this time not to respond to Pakistan's mischievous provocations. Our advice to the delegate of Pakistan is to refer to our numerous rights of reply that we have exercised in the past. Pakistan has only to look at itself and its own track record as a state that harbors and provides safe havens to terrorists and does so with impunity. Such uncalled for provocation is particularly regrettable and certainly misplaced at a time when after two days of intense discussions, we have all agreed that the path of peace can be the only path forward to resolve conflict and discord. It is not surprised that Islamabad's representative misused the UN Forum yet again. Islamabad misuses international platforms for baseless and malicious propaganda against India. As a country with one of the world's worst human rights records, Pakistan would do well to put its own house in order before venturing to point a finger at India. <laughs> और फिर सबसे बड़े जुल्म की बात ये है कि हमारी फॉरेस्ट लैंड जो है वो आर्मी ने अलर्ट करवा दी है डिफरेंट एरियाज के अंदर और जितने भी टूरिस्ट रिसॉर्ट्स थे उन पे कब्जा करके मकामी लोगों के लिए उन एरियाज को बैन कर दिया है Pakistan is blamed and rightly so for what it did in Kashmir introduced militancy and the gun culture that kills people and leaves lives shattered Pakistan's problem is that it never admits to their fault lines. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif recently said that Pakistan has learned a lesson and wants to live in peace with India. He emphasized that both the neighbors should not waste their resources on bombs and ammunition. However, with Pakistan, peace is just a punctuation. After Narendra Modi took over as the Prime Minister of India in 2014, he made it clear that talks and terror cannot go together. If Pakistan is really serious about restoring permanent peace, then it should give up its obsession with Kashmir and stop sponsoring terror. Then only it can build a healthy relationship with India. Just talking about peace is not enough. A video has gone viral on social media where Hezbollah Mujahideen chief Sayyid Salawadeen can be heard making a pledge to destroy India with several Pakistani soldiers standing for his protection and the crowd cheering for him. Salawadeen was at the funeral of Bashir Ahmad Peer, another Hezbollah terrorist who was killed in Pakistan recently. The murder of Peer is being viewed as a severe blow to both Pakistan and terror organizations. But the threat reveals Pakistan's hypocrisy or its measures against terrorists. A report. Hezbollah Mujahideen Chief Sayyid Salauddin was at the funeral of Bashir Ahmad Peer. Peer is another designated Hezbollah Mujahideen terrorist who was killed in Pakistan recently. According to a notification issued by the Ministry of Home Affairs, Bashir Ahmad Peer was responsible for providing logistics to Hezbollah Mujahideen terrorists 
especially for infiltration into Jammu and Kashmir's Kupwara district. A video of Bashir Ahmad Peer's funeral has gone viral on social media, where Salahuddin can be seen surrounded by Pakistani soldiers. As per reports, the funeral took place in a secure location in Pakistan's Rawalpindi. In the viral footage, Salahuddin can be heard making a pledge to destroy India, with several Pakistani soldiers standing for his protection and the crowd cheering for him. In our society, generally the VIPs get protection and they get protection from police or from paramilitary forces. There is no VIP today in Pakistan who is surrounded by the Pakistani army soldiers. So obviously, Sajid Salahuddin is a very very important person as far as Pakistan is concerned. Therefore, Pakistani army soldiers itself uh, take a care of Sajid Salahuddin's security. So that shows his importance uh, in the uh, scheme of things as far as Pakistan is concerned. The video comes months after the Financial Action Task Force removed Pakistan from its grey list after more than four years. The neighbouring country is still under the scanner of the global terrorism watchdog. The presence of the world's most wanted terrorist on its soil clearly states that Pakistan provided FATF with wrong information about the 34 action plans given to it to strengthen its ability to counter terrorism. Pakistan is also home to numerous terror organizations, five being India-centric, including Lashkar-e-Taiba and jaish e muhammad The United States has even exposed Pakistan for providing a launching pad to many foreign terror organizations like Islamic State and the Taliban. Pakistan today uses terrorism as a strategic tool and for them, all terrorist groups like Hezbollah Mujahid, lashkar e taiba jaish e are important. But Hezbollah Mujahid is very, uh, very, very important simply because it is believed that Hezbollah Mujahid generally uses uh, the local Pakistanis, uh, uh, correction, local Kashmiris, either in Pakistani occupied Kashmir or the ones in Kashmir Valley for the acts of terrorism. And Sayyid Salahuddin is a great motivator, hence his importance for Pakistan. So therefore, he has been protected by the Pakistani army, giving no doubt as to what Pakistan intends doing in the future. They use their army to not protect their soldiers, but to protect uh, terrorists like Sajid Salahuddin, whom they consider to be a very, very important asset. Pakistan's list of FATF shared actionable items does not accurately represent its commitment to battling terrorism. In reality, the nation continues to serve as a refuge for terrorists and organizations that finance terrorism. The biggest example is the lack of action against Tal Saeed, the new face of Jamaat ud dawa organization and the son of 2611 mastermind Hafi Saeed. According to intelligence agencies, Talha is next in link to take over functions of JUD, the parent body of the globally proscribed terror outfit lashkar e taiba Despite mounting evidence implicating Pakistan in funding international terrorism, the government has made little progress against it at home. Pakistan reeling in economic crisis appears to be making the same series of mistakes that have caused severe economic disaster in Sri Lanka. While Sri Lanka is on track to secure an IMF loan with Indian assistance, the situation in Pakistan becomes less hopeful by the day. Let's take a look at the current financial situations of Pakistan and the series of grave errors that have led the country's economy near complete disaster. The Pakistani economy is facing one of its worst crises in history. The country's foreign exchange reserves have almost vanished, and the country is struggling to pay off extremely high levels of external debt. Pakistan is in desperate need of financial support, 
and a bailout package from the International Monetary Fund to prevent its economy from completely collapsing. Although talks with the global financial institution are ongoing, Islamabad has not yet been able to persuade the IMF for a loan. It has, however, received a memorandum from the IMF outlining the terms and conditions for the completion of the loan program. To fulfill the IMF's conditions and requirements, Pakistan has approved new taxes, including a tax on electricity users to raise an additional 170 billion Pakistani rupees, 630 million USD in revenue. The burden on Pakistan's population has become heavier due to the higher tax rates. However, the government, which has no other option, has been compelled to claim that the reforms proposed by the IMF are favorable to Pakistan. हम कोशिश करेंगे इंशाल्लाह कि पाकिस्तान दूसरी दफा अपनी तारीख में आईएमएफ का प्रोग्राम मुकम्मल करे और इंशाल्लाह उसी स्पिरिट के साथ और सॉवरेन कमिटमेंट को सामने रखते हुए हमने ये सारा प्रोसेस जो है वो मुकम्मल किया है On one hand, Pakistan is at risk of default. On the other, the IMF is saying it wants more time for negotiations with Pakistan. Meanwhile, Inflation in the country continues to rise, affecting the purchasing power of its citizens. Many ordinary Pakistanis are forced to borrow money to afford even the most basic of necessities to keep up with the surge in the cost of living. The record inflation is causing unrest throughout Pakistan. The apex trade body in Pakistan, the Federation of Pakistan Chambers of Commerce and Industry, has also expressed resentment over the government's plan to impose new taxes. As the country lurches from crisis to crisis, Pakistani residents struggle to make a living amid soaring fuel prices. Just prior to the talks with the IMF delegation in Islamabad, the Pakistani government raised fuel prices by 15%. The economic crisis as well as the country's spiraling currency have Pakistan's oil companies teetering on the verge of collapse. Petrol stations are also rationing fuel supplies as a result of widespread reports that there is not enough fuel to go around. Although economic collapse for Pakistan has been forecasted and as of now seems imminent, the completion of the loan program with the IMF is not near finalized. This is partially owing to Pakistan's history of failing to fulfill the IMF's requirements. One such requirement, for example, has been renegotiations of energy deals with China. Moreover, Pakistan never made any significant structural changes to help reduce government spending or increase revenue. Despite frequently reaching out to the IMF for assistance, any meaningful reforms required by the IMF have failed to materialize in the country. Successive governments in Pakistan have also long used subsidies to woo voters in the country. Islamabad only has itself and its flawed policies to blame for the country's current economic situation. Forming a bad habit of surviving on Chinese dole in the garb of CPEC projects has put the Islamic Republic in a heavily dependent position. Failure to secure a bailout from the IMF will catapult the country into levels of never-before-seen desperation and destitution, and many fear that the country is on course to replicate the economic disaster that plagued its South Asian neighbor, Sri Lanka, last year. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at nin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.